Good evening, Mitsunan Tello. My name is Eve. I'm Filipino Swiss American. And on my channel, I discuss how to teach your child German when you are not a native German speaker. Today's topic is August 1st, and I will be baking August 1st exactly. So, August 1st is Swiss National Day, and it celebrates the formation of Switzerland in 1291. So the recipe I will be doing today is from the website healthyattakitchen.com by Andy Pillow. And it's such an amazing website. It has a ton of traditional Swiss recipes on it. And I absolutely love her recipe. She puts the right amount of salt in all her recipes and salt in bread is especially important. The recipes are in grams, but don't be scared. Digital scales are actually really cheap nowadays. Um, you can get a scale on Amazon for like $8.98 and this one I got at Target for like $10. And as long as you take good care of your scale and not put anything heavy on top and store it flat and just um, wipe it gently with a cloth when you're done baking, your digital scale will last you a long time. So don't be intimidated by recipe being in grams. I know who you are. I know it. once you don't see cups and teaspoons, you get a little scared, but don't be scared. This is so easy to use. And doubling a recipe in grams is so much easier than cups and spoons. So I always mise en place everything when I am baking. Mise en place means everything in its place. So I will measure out all the ingredients and have everything there so I don't forget to put anything in. This is something I learned in culinary school and I always do this with every single recipe. I will put the recipe in the description below. But as you can see, I have my oldest son measure everything out and make the whole recipe because it's a great way to bond, to learn math, and to learn Swiss traditional food so that when he's older, he can do this with his children. So I always warm up the milk a little bit and I always add the yeast to the milk as well as the sugar because that's going to help the yeast grow and activate it. If you have the choice between fresh yeast and dry yeast, always use the fresh yeast. The fresh yeast will always taste better. When everything is measured out, you're going to go ahead and add your all-purpose flour. Then you're going to add your salt and then your yeast milk sugar mixture and then you will turn on your mixer onto a slow speed and once it starts to come together you're going to slowly add little chunks of softened butter to the dough and then you will start turning the mixer up higher and then let it mix for around 10 minutes for me and my mixer 10 minutes is perfect so you may ask yourself, how do I know if I mix the dough long enough? Well, a trick I learned in culinary school, if you stretch the dough really thin and you can read newsprint through this dough and it doesn't rip, it's mixed enough. So this is a great rule of thumb if you are mixing dough and to check if it was mixed long enough. So I let my dough rest for an hour or two, depending on how hot it is or how cold it is or how much time I have. And when it's cold, I put a heating pad underneath and I put beach towels on it to let it rise. And then once it's done rising, we go ahead and take out the dough from the bowl. If you're wondering why we have so much dough, it's because I went back and times the recipe by two so I would have more bread. So my son is measuring out the bread into 120 gram pieces. I used to make rolls with my dad when I was little. And a trick to remember with your thumb, you're tucking the dough ball in and your other fingers are like little spiders. That's what I tell my son. So um, you wanna use your palm to push, tuck in the bottom part of the bread. And also you kind of pinch it, but you're also gentle. It's something that takes a lot of practice to make perfectly round rolls. So to make the crosses, use a sharp pair of scissors and just watch the video. It's so much easier just to watch it than me to explain everything. Um, but you wanna try to make it in the center of the crosses and make sure you do snip the ends like this so you get that distinct cross. After your rolls are cut, it is ready for your egg glaze. So you're gonna do that and then you will throw your rolls into your preheated oven. So you will preheat your oven to 450 degrees. And right when you put in the rolls, you're gonna lower it to 400 degrees. And your rolls might take around 13 minutes in some ovens and maybe 20 minutes. 
You can tell if they are done or not by their color. And also if you tap the roll and it sounds hollow, it's done. And another trick that I learned also, if you stick a thermometer in your bread and it says 200 degrees Fahrenheit, your rolls are done. So I found these flags on Amazon and then I went ahead and finished off my August 1st Beckley. And this is an example of what I make when I have extra dough for my children's bento boxes. And this bread freezes really well. So just put them in a gallon Ziploc bag and throw them in your freezer and pop it out the night before and it makes a great lunch. So a recipe book I wanna to talk to you about is by Andy Pillow and it's called Swiss Cookies. And I got this off Berkeley.ch, which I will put below. Um, but I absolutely love this recipe book. This is my favorite recipe book I've ever gotten. Um, the pictures are such high quality and the paper is so thick. It's just such a high quality recipe book and I, I love that. Um, and every recipe she puts on here, she writes a backstory to it. So it's not just a recipe book, it's food history, it's you know, a cookie she made as a child and she's talking about it. She's talking about different bakeries that have been around for generation after generation. Um, so you learn so much more than just a Swiss recipe. You learn about the culture in Switzerland, about how important these baked products are to Swiss people. So that's all I have today. The next video will be about different books that I read this summer. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Dankeschön. Tschüss.